So Giles has joined us oh. so we could chat through today's top stories. I mean, Giles, I mean this together. Well, these royal two. appointment. I have to say, we are old friends. We met first more than 30 years Least ago. Least surprising thing I've heard today. <laughs> <laughs> you know everyone, don't you, Tom? If I have names to drop, I have good ones. <laughs> and I have to say, recently you met up with one of my grandchildren. I did, at that love Mr T's school, the School, and I read to your grandson. You did. And Aww. he came up She's brilliant. She so visits sweet. school libraries, and I think you were reopening the library or something. I was. Yes, I anyway, was. He really fell for Is that him there? That's it. Oh, that's Kit. That's so nice. Part of the grandson Kit. Yes, that's and nice he came name. up and he was very proud of Grandpa. Oh, that's he was. Very nice. Where did you two first meet? Come on. We're, well, we first met, I think, actually at a book event in Manchester, and we travelled back on the plane together and we bonded. You were talking about your book of Queen Victoria's Travels. That's right. Do you remember that? Good memory, yes, yeah? yes. Oh, Which course. went on to make a movie. The Young Victoria. Yeah. yeah. And I was talking about my book, which didn't go on to me. <laughs> hey, but you did, but you did write a good review. I, I've got, I wrote Thank a, you very much, That's Charles. the least I could do. And then we met. We had a wonderful conversation. Sarah's been very helpful to me over the years, uh, talking about the late Queen Elizabeth II and her relationship with her and her admiration for the Queen and your children's relationship and, and life with Granny. And you were so wonderful about that. Was that for your book, John? That was for my book about the late Queen. And you were very open. I mean, you loved the late Queen, didn't you? Yes, completely and utterly. I mean, really, it's like walking with a legend, an icon. And But the whole nation loved her. The world loved her. Yeah. And so for me to have a second with her, with Her Majesty, was just such an honour. But you told me how they would take the children to have tea at Windsor and they had to put on... Uh, manners for Granny as opposed to manners at home. Mm. Yes, that's ta <laughs> Table Manners Z at home and Table Manners A with Granny. Tell us the difference between Z and A. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think the viewers want to know that. Well, I think every Z. every family in the country in the world has got a version of Z and A. Yeah. With 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 that generation, right? You, absolutely. You know, you make sure you're on your best behaviour around your grand. And you, yeah, absolutely. And now I'm a grand. They have to be on best behaviour. Exactly. Really. Nah, no chance. Oh, no chance. But but actually, Z Z is all you can let it just go and relax. And A is your you know doing it properly. Well, listen, speaking of grandparents, that's exactly what we're talking about in our first story, because King Charles apparently is spending more time in Windsor in order to step up in his grandfathering duties. Now, Camilla says uh, that Charles is a hands-on grandfather uh, who will get down on his knees, crawl around with the children for an hour, making funny noises and laughing. This is very important. Are you similar, Giles? Am I similar to yeah, that? Yeah, are you on the floor, are you playing around? The king is my role model. <laughs> but I do know, actually, I've, I've seen the king with his grandchildren and indeed with his step-grandchildren, and he is very easy with them. Yeah. He's very, and he's, very, he's a very amusing person, and he loves playing with them, and they love playing with him. Uh, you can see they adore him. I mean, look at this moment where he goes and sits on his granddad's lap. It's just so effortlessly. Well, he also, he's such a kind man. They both are both the king and the queen, they're very kind. They love their grandchildren and I, that just, I love that. The only thing is, it's, I can imagine it's the sort of granddad that will always go, come out and do some potting in the shed and the kids are like, oh, I want to play on the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, come out. So those kids are all going to learn how to garden quite well, I think. They're going to be learning how to garden, they can learn about art, they're learning Shakespeare <laughs> already. Little children are being told, you know, how to learn to speak to can be or not to be. Can you talk us about your jersey? Well, this is a fun one. He sort of drops this in in a kind of, this is the reason why I'm wearing it, and it'll be a very strange... Is this normal that he... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's always... So I shouldn't have Arsenal. asked him. No, oh, no, 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 but no, always... Like like Listen, <laughs> what we're going to learn in the next cat. two and a half hours is you can say or ask whatever you <laughs> want. What, what, are your, <laughs> what are your favourite animals? What uh, kind of pets do you like? Uh, pets, uh, what, apart from corgis? Apart from corgis. And Norfolk terriers. And Norfolk terriers. Horses. Do, do you like cats? Uh, love cat. Oh. <laughs> yes. So I wore the wrong jumper. <laughs> but it's a crazy cat. Uh, yes. No, I love. Uh, no, I, I like any animal. I m actually prefer animals than anything else. Really, they're so kind, and I just love kindness. I think we should have more kindness. And for those of you out there who love cats, I do love cats. Yes, I do love cats. This is my favourite cat. Well. It's yeah, a, what, yeah but hang on, cat. it's a good question. Why are you wearing that? <laughs> I'm wearing it because he's a crazy cat. Because I'm a crazy, crazy cat. We have a cat. <laughs> We have a cat at home who is actually the neighbour's cat, but has now not just come to live with us, but is actually sleeping on the bed. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, no. So it's your cat, really? Yeah, and I've now got some sort of itches, and I'm thinking that maybe the cat's oh. got fleas and they're jumping What's onto the me. Called? The What's cat, the cat's called? This cat is called Nala. It's a Maine Coon. Yeah. Of course yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. If you just stay there as well, Giles, that would yes. be great for me. Now then. <laughs> but 
parents, uh, people seeking parent advice on Google, I think we've all, well, I don't know if you guys have done this, but I know I have. Studies found that four in five parents seek advice on how to parent their kids. Uh, well, I wouldn't say to Google rather than social media. It's, uh, it showed that the most common discussions include toilet training, sleep discipline, and breastfeeding. Many parents said that felt that social media is quicker than seeking expert advice through traditional methods. I don't know if this is tips on Google or social media, because they are two different things. Is this sad for you, Giles, or are you just passing of time, or is this just a... It's when, just how we've evolved. When I was a young parent, we had a book. It was by somebody called Dr. Spock. Nothing to do with <laughs> flying into space. Not that Mr. Spock. Dr. Spock. He was a famous um, child doctor in the 1940s and 1950s. And my parents gave us his book. And he told you everything. Any anxiety of any kind. So we did a, we did a book. Today, I, in anticipation of this, I googled how to change a nappy. Because <laughs> it's a long time since I last did this. You'll be relieved to know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was completely confusing to me because nappies now are not made of toweling. Yeah. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a pin involved. The real thing for me when I was a boy or a young man uh, changing uh, the nappy was folding it in the correct way. It was a linen nappy. And then you had a pin to, yes, to, yes. to fix it. And you had to put your fingers in so that the pin didn't go through oh. the baby's tummy. Uh, who taught you, Alison? Well, um, it definitely was my mum, because I was a single parent and I moved back into my mum's house. And the first thing I realised is how much sleep you lose out on first of all, but having my mum there to just nurture and help me throughout That's that was just wonderful. So it was it? just my mum. We didn't... I don't think we turned to Google at all, but, however, but I had a baby nowadays... Lockdown, so Google was our did best friend. Absolutely. I, was, but, I yeah. agree, but... We had, we had Casper 2020, so it was in, right, right in the middle of lockdown. So... What tip would you ask for Google then? Well, no, that no, no, wasn't a tip. I remember the second, the first night, you know, everyone sleeps through the first night. Yeah. Everyone, like, the baby's exhausted. Uh, you know, your wife obviously is exhausted, yes. you're exhausted. So you, everyone sleeps through. And then you wake up next morning and go, what's everyone, oh, got this? What's everyone banging on about? <laughs> second night, I remember waking up at half three and I picked up my phone and I just I literally Googled, when do babies sleep through? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to prepare myself for this. It just I, changes It's though, a good it? thing. Google is actually a good thing. I think it's, it's all about where you're getting your information it's a, from. It's though. a good resource. Ask well, the right you. question, they'll be given various alternatives, yeah. and go for it. I do remember the, the, the thing that cemented my marriage was that I loyally woke up for the two o'clock feed, even though I wasn't actually administering oh, the two o'clock feed. But you would get up. I, oh, yeah. Well, I woke up, and then I read my wife to sleep. Afterwards, oh, with, that's with, with very her. nice. That's very kind. Because it actually, but also we did it together. It was more team-like. And so the next day, when she was exhausted and ratty, I was also exhausted and ratty. <laughs> so we did the, you know. I think it's quite good for people when they're on their own and they're frightened. At least they can go on Google and yeah. get an answer. Yeah. Whether it, whatever it is, it's. I think for people out there who just are so frightened, it's just good there is something. I tell you when I use it all the time, Sarah. I use it. You know when I'm not feeling very well, or my son's not very well. That's when I will Google. Yeah. Oh, he's getting a few pains in his head, and this is happening. I will Google it then, but then you see all the awful stuff as well, and you're like, oh, yeah. oh my god. Well, also, the advice always changes, you know, whether they just yeah. sit on their back or their front. I mean, I can't remember which it was in our day, but I do remember spending hours looking over the cop, thinking, is it still breathing? Yeah, always. Is it, yeah, is yeah, it still yeah, breathing? Yes, and prod, prod, prod. I think that's yeah, just yeah, the right yeah. path. Yeah. Yeah. Prod. That, that's, I, you know, that's never going to change. Either. The other thing Dr Spock did say, and I do remember this, <laughs> was if they're crying, if they're making a terrible noise, they won't. Leave it for five minutes. Uh, never mind leaving it for one minute. Five minutes, a long time. But I would sit outside, a little bit older now, but they're crying and uh, shaking the edge of the cot. And if you leave it for five minutes, at, almost at five minutes, they stop. Really? They lie down and go to sleep. But you always want to go in and pick them up. By the way, Charles, I'm picking up on the theme here. On Friday, you were talking to people and they fell asleep. Now you're talking to your wife. <laughs> now you're reading to your wife and you're falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. There's lovely soporific quality about your... Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, That's why he's got his own podcast. Very good, by the way. <laughs> very, very good. Um, <laughs>